So not all people who watch too much porn have an addiction, but a lot of people are ending up with problems that they're suffering with. That's for sure. So tell us, what is pornography? As opposed to maybe just some centrally appealing images. Okay. So some years ago, I think it was a long time ago, a, a judge was asked that question. And he said, I don't know how to describe it, but I know it when I see it. Hmm. One of the things that I heard about it years ago is that when it's educational, when it's for a purpose of educating people, because many sexologists have used sexually explicit films with their clients to help with all kinds of issues. Right. So if there's an educational component, uh, but pornography doesn't have that, and it can be really unrealistic. It is unrealistic. I think that, you know, having um, sexually explicit content for the purpose of education is really helpful because so many people are not educated about sexuality, anatomy, sexual function, and so it's a, it's a teaching tool. But you're right. I mean, it's really the porn industry has exploded into things that when I was growing up, you couldn't imagine. I was talking to my brother yesterday, and he said, I remember um, we would go to the drugstore, the corner drugstore on Wednesdays, because that was garbage day. And we would bring our wagon, and we'd get all the Playboy magazines, and then they'd stash them in their friend's garage. So that's one thing, what we used to see. But what, what's out there now is very disturbing. And young people are seeing this, and it's so, it's so accessible, affordable, anonymous, it's available, and this is how people get into trouble. It's coming into people's homes, into their children's bedrooms. Right, and it's showing things, it's like increasing stimulation, increasing strange activities, things that people may never have thought of on their own, but they see the image and then they get interested in it. Right, and it pulls them in. And then their brains are being um, conditioned to respond to this sort of stimuli, which has a lot of novelty, um, increased intensity, and that cannot be transferred to a real life situation. And so that's why we're seeing so many people who have erectile dysfunction and low libido and delayed ejaculation and all sorts of sexual problems. And what we don't always realize is that pornography is a big business. Oh. So there's a lot of money to be made from it and they also know how to target different age groups and give them something that will appeal to them. Right, the vulnerable. You know, I remember I equated to cigarettes Prior, prior to 1960, cigarettes were available and they were used to calm people's nerves and make them feel better. But then in 1964, the Surgeon General came out and said, smoking is harmful to you, it can hurt you. And I feel like that's what's gonna happen with porn. As we educate people and people start talking and acknowledging what's happening to them and their sexual function and why they're avoiding, avoiding relationships and avoiding their partners, and becoming disconnected from their partners and feeling isolated and lonely and depressed, I think it's all going to come out and people are going to start to understand and then make informed choices. And hopefully they will reach out for some kind of counseling or therapy, you know, and not a group that shames them, but a place where they can really express what's going on right. and find yeah. solutions. Right. They have so much shame themselves, and they have to hide it, and, it, and it's a secret, and they, um, it puts up barriers between, it creates barriers in, the li in their lives. So, no, as therapists, as healthcare practitioners, there's no place for judgment. People okay. will not open up, and we're there to help people, not to judge them. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that people turn to pornography is that it's easier. They don't have to, you know, play up to a woman. They don't have to do things to get their partner to be available and willing. They just can relax and watch the scene and the person does it for them. Right. But it's not a person. It's a computer. 
and even if it's a real person at the other end, they're not really connecting to you. Right. Right. So, one good question to ask is, what do you consider excessive watching of pornography, since many people watch it and it's not really a problem? It's a, a difficult question, but I think that, because I don't think there's an answer, I think for each person it's different. If it starts to create a problem in their life where it interferes with their life and their relationships, and they'd rather turn to porn on the internet than to their partner, I think it's a problem. If they start to feel guilty about it, they're craving it, um, they're, they continue to do it in spite of negative consequences, there's a problem. There's also a problem when someone maybe doesn't really have a problem with pornography, but has a partner who doesn't let him watch anything, you know, stifles him. Maybe talk about that. It's still a problem for them if their partner's mad at them, right? So there's something that really needs to be talked about and dealt with. Right, and brought out into the open. Yes. That's an important point because there are men that would say, well, my partner doesn't let me do anything and uses that maybe as an excuse. Right, but that doesn't work well in relationships when your partner doesn't let you do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so it requires really communicating. Absolutely. So what are some of the adverse effects that you've noticed your clients experiencing from their excessive use of pornography? The most common is erectile dysfunction, and that is a big motivator for men to get into my office because when they stop um, being able to perform, when their penis doesn't get hard anymore, it's very disturbing to them. So are you talking about them not having erections while watching the pornography or not having erections with a partner? Typically, they can get an erection with pornography when viewing that, but then when they're with their partner, they don't get aroused. And what happens is they are used to having high level of, of stimulation, visual stimulation, in order to get aroused. And then when they're with their real partner, they don't, it doesn't occur because they, it's not constant novelty. It's not that high intensity. And so their brain doesn't release the amount of dopamine that it no, normally does when viewing porn. And so they don't get aroused. And then they start to avoid it because they're embarrassed. When a man stops being able to, or when he starts to have problems with his erection, um, that's very difficult for many men to deal with and they'll avoid sex. Or they'll blame it sometimes on their partner. Mm. I, I think more than sometimes. It's very easy to blame your partner for not being sexual enough and not dressing up enough or whatever it is you think you need. Right. But that causes so many problems as far as even on self-image. People compare themselves to what they see in porn, and that's really not reality. And so um, when you compare yourself, the saying I use often, comparison is the thief of all joy. Mm. Wow. So how does an individual know if he has a problem with porn, if it's really a problem? Well, I think if, if, they're, if they're watching porn all night and they're not studying for an exam, if they're trying to get on it during work hours and they could jeopardize their job, um, if it's interfering with relationships, if it is taking their time and energy away from people and responsibilities, if it is making them feel isolated and alone, if they're feeling guilty, when they're looking at things that they normally uh, would not be drawn to and they're ashamed of that, it's a problem. Mm -hmm. it, it affects their self-worth and the way they view themselves. And then I have a, a related question. How does a partner or a spouse know that, they're, that the other person really has a problem with pornography or is doing excessive porno watching? Well, many partners don't know. They have no idea because it's hidden. And, um, but when it does come out, it can create a lot of problems, especially when it was something that they never thought that their partner would do. So then there's trust violation. 
um, are you still attracted to me? You like, you know, I don't do what those women in porn do. It really disrupts the foundation of the relationship. And so they've got a lot of talking to do and a lot of listening and a lot of understanding. And another piece of this is that the women need a lot of education because there are women, they, they get pregnant, they have a, a child, and there's no sex, and they, they just don't understand that the man, what is he supposed to do in the relationship? Creating problems that people need to understand um, what the risks are and how it can affect the relationship negatively. And they need that communication all, all throughout the relationship. Right. So that you're not blindsided by it, because that's what I find happens to several women. They just don't understand that this is going on in society, and, and they think this man wouldn't do it, and they just and devastated it, by it. They are devastated. You know, just thinking of one of my clients who found out her husband was doing porn. They have three teenage daughters. It rocked her world. She really... Um, couldn't understand it, how easy it is to get sucked into this, how powerful that stimulus for with, uh, um, this high intensity visual, which basically is part of our, of who we are as human beings, the desire to be sexual, because that's essential in order for the species to carry on. Mm -hmm. And so when you have that uh, visual and it's, it's arousing, and then it um, is associated with very pleasurable sensations like an orgasm, it's very, very difficult to get out of that. And it's um, causing a lot of problems. And that's the piece that is not talked about very much, just how difficult it is to get out of it. It requires recovery just as addictions require recovery, and it requires really you know, evaluating yourself. So what would you say is recovery? What, how would you recognize recovery? Well, I think it depends on, there's a spectrum. Like, um, I just spoke with, and I shared that interview with you with a patient of mine, Michael. And so many people aren't even aware of the problem. Once they become aware and they uh, understand that this can cause sexual dysfunctions, they're going to stop because they don't want to risk that. Other people um, go through what's called a reboot, where they um, eliminate porn from their life. And then their brain um, basically rewires itself. And so they, not, they don't need that high level of stimulation, high levels of dopamine to be released. And then they start to become attracted with their sex, their normal sex drive come back, comes back and they're attracted to their partner again. So this can be, um, this can be solved for a lot of people by just stopping or, or greatly dec decreasing it and um, really consciously choosing how much they're going to watch if they choose to continue. Other people, it's taken over their life, and then they do need more help. It is an addiction then. Yeah, and then they really need to go through you know, a period of time where they're dealing with the emotions, and it's not that pleasant. It's not, because um, porn is a way to self-soothe. You know, when people feel stressed, they'll go to porn. Um, when they feel that they're not in control, they'll go to porn. And so what they really need to do is learn how to regulate their emotions and um, cope without that technique. And so find healthy strategies, whether that be exercise, getting involved in activities that are uh, healthy and um, more beneficial to them and their partners and their families. You said something at the beginning that some people will stop because they hear that they could lose their erections and lose their ability. But there are many people, just like with cigarettes, you know, they may know all the dangers, but they feel it's not going to happen to me. I'm unique. Right. But the first time it does, very powerful motivator especially in young men, because there's no, there really um, are very few reasons why this should be happening. Right. So when that happens, you've got their attention. Good point. So they're educated. They've heard it. 
and they may keep doing it, but there's a point where... Or many don't know. Many of my patients, again, young, healthy men, have gone to urologists and been worked up, and they think that they're just going to have to live with this. <laughs> it's broken. And then when they understand that there is something that they may be doing that can be affecting the way that they respond sexually, um, they're so relieved. They're hopeful. And uh, they easily then, well, not so easily. It's difficult, but they're motivated, and so they'll stop watching. Yeah, and I did listen to your interview with this client of yours, and it was really poignant. He's sharing how hard it was for him that, that he went through phases. So talk a little more about that. Well, this is Michael, and Michael's a young, healthy man, and he went to uh, see urologists, multiple urologists, and had a problem with um, uh, sexual confidence because sometimes he wouldn't stay hard when he was with a partner. And uh, so he would start have to... He, some, he'd avoid relationships at times, and then, or he had to fantasize about something that he's seen in porn when, he's, when he was with his girlfriend. So he, was sent, he, he um, asked the urologist for help. He said, I need to talk to somebody. So I, he was referred to me. And in our first conversation, I think probably when he called me um, after hearing his story for a minute, I just asked him if he watched porn. And he thought, well, yeah, everybody watches porn, because many do. And um, when, he, when I explained to him what can happen, he was so relieved. And he's so motivated. And he got involved in, um, he went right to your brain on porn, that website, uh, looked at the video that's on YouTube, which is excellent. He got involved in Reboot Nation, which is another forum. And he's helping other people. And he is now, he's been porn free for three months. And he's got his life back. He's doing all sorts of things that he hasn't done in a long time. He's focused. He's um, eating healthy, exercising, new relationship. He was so excited because he was at the grocery store, and all of a sudden he, he noticed that he was starting to notice um, the women. And his desire was coming back. And he was like the best feeling ever because he hasn't felt like that since high school. Wow. That, that's powerful. Yeah. It's, it's really... And, you know, it's a good awesome. reminder. You know, also, what I'm hearing is something that really works, and you can hear it on this series, um, how many times somebody who helps others heals from whatever their own issue is. Once they understand the issue, when you keep helping other people, it prevents you from going back to it because you see more and more clearly the damage that it does. Right. And what Michael, you know, told his parents, he told his sister, his friends. And so he's very open. And when he does get the urge to go to view porn, he'll take a cold shower. If that doesn't work, he'll reach out and he'll call a friend. And they usually, uh, well, they have. They've been able to um, distract him and the urge will go away. He's alone. He's got help because he opened up about it. And so many people then op said, I'm experiencing the same thing. And they are. It's so common. But the problem that I've seen is somebody didn't open up about it. They got exposed. They got caught. And then they get shamed. Yeah. And that gets really hard to talk to anybody. Right. Because then when you relapse into doing it, which, of course, happens a lot, uh, you don't want to tell anybody. So th this is incredible. That's a good example to show the value of really opening up and, and being real and authentic in your life. Absolutely. Going, you know, I mean, just you, you see the pictures of people viewing porn. They're in a dark room, staring at a computer, looking like a zombie. Is that the way you want to live? Is that how you were meant to live? Is that who you are? The answer is no. All right, so I have another question. So how, as a sexual wellness coach, how do you assist men, particularly men, to overcome this problem with pornography? Well, usually they're suffering. That's why they come to see me. And so what we talk about are their motivators. Why do they want to eliminate this from their life? 
what do they want to experience in their intimate sexual relationship? What's possible? I help them, you know, really um, come up with or really explore what it is that's important to them. What do they want? And when they get that vision and they really get in touch with their motivators, um, they're, it's easier to deal with the barriers. And so one of the things that I think is really important is for people to identify their strengths. And um, there are different websites where uh, you can do an assessment and they give you your five top strengths, signature strengths. And when you identify that and your values, and you're living in alignment with your values and what's important, and you are um, tapping into your strengths, they're much more successful. They're coming at it from not like I'm trying to run away from something awful, but I am moving towards something that's worthwhile. That's beautiful. That's, that's what I'm talking about, that shame and that embarrassment and I'm bad. and That does not help a person yeah. to overcome it. Because that's the very thing that soothes them and they're trying to get, overcome it and stop doing the thing that soothes them when they feel so bad about themselves. Right. But coming from the strengths, that's, that can really help a person. That's beautiful. Thank you. So tell us about your free gift and how people can get in touch with you. Okay. Um, the gift is, it's a tool that I use because I am a coach also. And so um, it's a tool to help um, create a vision, a sexual uh, wellness vision of what it is that maybe you didn't even think about. And that's one of the issues that I see a lot is that people's um, view of what sex is is so narrow that they have not explored the possibilities of experiencing sensuality, um, loving connection, energetic flow, uh, because they've never, they don't know about it. So anyway, I, I, I help them identify, or I, it's education, there's some education, but getting in touch with their motivators, what do I want, why is this important, and how to move around the barriers. And oftentimes it's taking baby steps, and that's how they get there, one step at a time. But as you're talking, I know that you've mentioned young men, but older men, really have many of them have not learned about sensuality and then they naturally have more difficulty getting erections so many of them turn to pornography because they want so much stimulation rather than finding a way to be stimulated with a partner right it's interesting you said that because some of my patients who have had prostate cancer um, and have had a prostatectomy and now have erectile dysfunction um, are having the best sex of their lives because they have expanded what sex is and they are um, experiencing eroticism in a completely different way. And I have experienced that with men also, that, that they have said that and shared that, yeah. yes. Yeah. So there is hope for everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. If people are motivated, if they want it, they can find a way. What is it that men are seeing in porn? that they are loving, and how does that affect the women in their lives? Um, well, it's not good. Men are learning about sex through porn, and it's absolutely what the majority of women do not want. It's fast, friction, focused on genitals. There's no heart. Um, there's no uh, uh, slow, tender touch on sensual touch. Everything is focused in on genitals and there's a whole body, um, skin, which is a very sensual organ. And it also, women need time to transition and relax so that their body gets aroused and then they will have desire. There's not enough time. Men are taught from porn to cut out the desire phase of sexual arousal, of sexual response. And so they go to instant arousal, focusing on the penis. The focus is on their penis within two minutes. It's a turnoff because there is no time to, um, to warm the woman up, and she needs time. So 
we're really doing a disservice to men because these good men are learning about sex through porn and it's 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 not how women become aroused it's not what women desire they want a heart they want to feel connected they want love they want intimacy so it sounds as if you feel that women are the ones who can educate the men about what they want and what they love you know what every woman is different every woman is wired differently most men their um, anatomy is pretty standard you know uh, the nerve pelvic nerve are exactly where you would expect but for women every woman is different and where her hot spot is you know the, the spot that will trigger orgasm it's different in every woman and the type of touch that they want or sensation that they want is different so it's unfortunate that people are together, couples are together for so long, and they never shared what it is that they really want sexually. So in my office, sometimes I go through step by step exactly what um, a woman would want. And they're so grateful because I'm saying what they won't say. I'm asking them, you know, obviously to describe things to me, but their, their partners are, I never knew that. And when they have that information, now they can feel successful. Now they know what to do to, to turn their, their partner on, their woman on. And that's what men want. They want to turn their women on. It makes them feel like a champion, champion um, to have that in their life. So people can reach me through my website, which is www.mbcah.com. Uh, or email me at mryan at mbch.com. And just spell it because there's different ways to spell names. Okay, so mryan at mbcah.com. You can also Google Dr. Maureen Ryan.com, www.drmaureenryan.com. It's probably the easiest way. Okay, wonderful. So, Maureen, thank you so much for sharing about this important, important issue. Thank you for having me. And to those of you listening, I look forward to speaking to you again soon.